Good afternoon once again. The topic of the second discussion is sustainable mobility. With us, we have Mr. Efthimis Bakoyanis, who is the General Secretary of Spatial Planning and Urban Environment in the Ministry of Environment. He is uh, the right man to talk about sustainable mobility. You are yourself a special planner and uh, you have long experience in drafting sustainable mobility plans. And I would like to start by saying something which I believe is commonplace. The pandemic came along and it changed our lives radically, especially the first year when we had many limitations, the lockdowns. There were no cars in the streets, but the people went out to the streets. We saw many children getting their bicycles and uh, moving around the neighborhoods, uh, people walking around. Uh, this was something unprecedented uh, that happened due to this uh, pandemic. Maybe this was one of the very few positive sides of the pandemic. And all of a sudden now we have heavy traffic, we have streets uh, filled with cars. It's like uh, nothing changed. Why? hasn't been any effort in our country similar to efforts that have been made in big cities like New York, Paris, Milan, cities which decided to change something due to the pandemic. Why haven't we heard any initiative being taken in order to make the most of what happened due to the pandemic? Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. I believe it's a right start that we are making now. Undoubtedly, the pandemic was a major opportunity. We actually saw which was the identity of our city. We realized that we can actually walk around uh, in our neighborhood. We can smell uh, flowers. Uh, we can uh, speak uh, with our neighbors. Uh, we can actually walk short distances, which wouldn't be feasible prior to the pandemic. I believe that one of the major problems affecting the Greek cities is a habit, if you want, a habit that people have when they want to move around the city. This is a habit that we have developed during the last 30, 40 years, a habit that actually has turned us dependent on our cars. And even for very small distances, which could easily be covered by walking or by taking the bicycle, like, for example, taking the children to school in the morning. Most of the schools can be found at a distance of 300, 350 meters from the house. So this could be covered on foot. But now, if you take a look what happens in the morning, you will see that most of the parents actually use the cars in order to take their children to schools. Now, with regard to the effort that was made, I don't want to be so pessimistic or negative. Efforts were actually made. First of all, there was a very important legislative initiative on the basis of which the municipalities uh, were given the possibility to implement uh, measures in order to increase the number of bicycle uh, lanes. This uh, was the case in Salonika municipality, but also in many other municipalities. Many were those who implemented this uh, legislation in order to build uh, temporary bicycle lanes and pedestrian uh, paths. And these actually, these measures were implemented especially during the summer and especially in areas where there were many people who wanted to walk around. We didn't do as well once the pandemic uh, was over. Why? Because uh, then all the people decided to return to their old habits uh, and they started taking the cars once again. And especially now that there is the fear of using the mass uh, transportation means, we have seen an increase in traffic. Yes, uh, this is a global phenomenon. We have seen a major blow being dealt to the mass transportation means because of this fear. Yes, this uh, public transportation means that were very popular in Europe uh, have uh, now been suffering from uh, the pandemic. You know that in other cities there were these uh, public uh, bicycles that people could rent uh, and now no one actually chooses these. However, we also witnessed many protests in Athens, in Salonika, where half of the Greek population resides against the mass transportation means. Can we actually talk about uh, sustainable mobility when we don't have a developed uh, public transportation system? Of course, uh, 
prior to the pandemic, we had a 10-year-long uh, crisis uh, that uh, limited uh, the capacity of uh, the Greek state to renew the fleet of the transportation means. Uh, so how can we talk about sustainable mobility if we cannot meet certain requirements? Look, sustainable mobility involved three pillars. First of all, walking, which is not very easy to take place since we don't have very good sidewalks. Second, bicycle. Again, we are lagging behind, especially in terms of of numbers of uh, bicycle lanes. There are only a few exceptions of Greek cities that have uh, developed bicycle lanes, and these are Trika, Lakarditsa, Larissa, cities uh, that have actually developed uh, an extensive network. But in most other Greek cities, even in Athens, which is the capital, we have a very limited uh, network of bicycle lanes, although th- the part of the southern uh, bicycle lane from Gazi to Faliro is uh, very popular. It attracts large numbers of uh, people. The public transportation means uh, that you mentioned indeed constitutes a problem because during the crisis it wasn't developed as we wanted. The metro, of course, uh, comes into play and replaces part of the commuting and of the mobility, but of course uh, you cannot say reach all destinations with the metro. There need to be circular lines connected to the tram and to the train stations so that there can be a network which in turn will reduce the pollution in the city. And of course, there is another measure that pertains to the new buses that have already been ordered. Okay, since we're talking about sustainable mobility, which in your view is the first priority that we need to set if we want to change our cities, if we want to see them in a different light and see them changing? Because the most important thing is whether we do want that or not. Do we really want our cities to change? If we do, what is the first priority that we need to set? I believe that there can be some easy initiatives that can make our cities safe, first and foremost. The number one thing that should be done, tomorrow that is, is to reduce the speed limit in the urban environment. The limit should be at 30 kilometers per hour. By doing that, we would be taking the first step in order to make our cities safer. The second thing, we need to do something about the sidewalks. In other words, a large part of the road network is uh, actually used by cars. And uh, the sustainable mobility plans are actually aimed in this direction. In other words, we want uh, to increase the size of sidewalks. We want to stop parking of cars on the sidewalks and uh, thus make the cities uh, better. Now, smaller size interventions like the sidewalks or the bicycle lanes uh, with special marking, lanes which which can actually absorb part of the traffic on a daily basis uh, can be very beneficial. And we have examples from other parts of the world. For example, Athens or Salonika or the Greek cities, they could have an increased number of people walking to school, to university, to work. We have uh, cities of the Netherlands, of England, and of other European countries, cities that are suffering from bad weather, but still cities that have an increased number of uh, pedestrians. Yes, uh, this, uh, of course, uh, presupposes a change of culture, and this change uh, can only be gradual. And we have seen people who have lived abroad, and they have developed this habit, but when they came back in Greece, they turned to their bad habits. You mentioned the example of the bicycle, and I know that uh, it is something that interests you a lot. We are now in the process of developing a strategy for the bicycles. Uh, What would be the result of that strategy, in your view? I have the pleasure to tell you that we are in a close cooperation with the Ministry of Infrastructure and 
I want to believe that by the mid of October, we will have concluded uh, in the co- joint program, which will then be presented by the Prime Minister, who is a fan of bicycles, by the way, and who will give the message that uh, cities have to change and that priority must be given to bicycles. Now, which are going to be the priorities of this strategy? They're not going to be only infrastructure priorities. No, we're going to provide incentives uh, to the entrepreneurial world. The strategy will provide solutions to problems pertaining to mobility in the city. And of course, it will have an environmental aspect in order to encourage people who want to use their bicycles but are is not say are not using the bicycle due to the bad quality of the street to be able to do that eventually. Thank you very much for your time and for this very interesting discussion. I hope that uh, once this uh, new strategy for bicycles is announced, uh, we will see the Minister of Environment uh, going to the Ministry by b- bicycle. It would be a great uh, It would be something great to see the ministers using bicycles. Thank you.